Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate land website, www.thelandgeek.com. And Land Geek Nation, he's back. And he's drinking something weird. I'm going to call it rich man juice. The man, the myth, the person we all aspire to do, to be living off the beach in Carlsbad, California, the owner of reserveland.com, landhub.com, and some new secret project we can't discuss. We'll discuss what we can't discuss. Duran Frazier! Duran, what's up, buddy? I got a mouthful of food. It's actually kind of nice to actually be on this podcast and have a mouthful of food. So, um, excuse me. Yeah, well, that's, I, that's nice. Well, I, well, I mean, my, my protein bar. You know what's so funny is I was just walking to my office, and one of the secretaries was like, I've got, you know, I, I just had a big lunch, and, and you know, she's feeling terrible, and she's tired. And I'm like, why don't you take a 10-minute power nap? She's like, I wish. Isn't that funny? Like, people with jobs, they just can't take a 10-minute power nap whenever they want. Like, she has to sit in her little cube, do what other people tell her to do, even though physically speaking, she or mentally, she's not prepared because of her big lunch. She's not going to be efficient at all. And I just, you know, I get spoiled sometimes. We get spoiled. Like, we forget that other people have to work and, you know, they have That's, to, they're on other people's, you know, agendas, not their own. Corporate America, in my opinion, is destroying the workplace. Um, you know, by, <clears throat> by just not giving them the ability to, take a break because it, we, you and I have talked about it several times. There's a, cert, there's a certain way that we are most efficient uh, when we eat correctly, when we exercise, when we take time out to, you know, whether it's meditate or pray, a lot of things that we do help us be more efficient in the workplace. And I, I look at it every day and I talk to friends and I go, gosh, I feel so bad for you. And, I, <laughs> and everything I do, I, I, I try to give them ideas. And, but at the end of the day, I'm not the boss. You know, I can't, I can't tell their boss what to, what to tell them to do. But, but it is uh, really sad. I mean, you, you, you know, you nailed it. It's just a sad, uh, it's a sad place we live in today where corporate America, they treat you like a robot and not a human being. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't those, be, I'm not here, those to, be, I'm not here to, be, I'm not to be somber and, and get everybody frustrated and down um, because there are actually a lot of good companies out there now figuring it out, so that's good. But at the end of the day, there are a lot, I mean, obviously more, more so than not, companies that just don't know how to create efficiencies in the workplace with their employees. Yeah, you know what's interesting is, and I think we've talked about this, Wait, wait, what are you drinking? What is this rich man juice before we go to this next topic? Okay, so I'll, I'm going to read it to you. Okay, it's organic suja essentials. Inside of it is apple, banana, mango, spinach, lemon, kale, spirulina, chlorella, which I, I should know how to say that, barley, and alfalfa. It's non GMO verified, cold pressed juice. So, what is, um, it? what is this, ten, $10 rich person juice? Is this a lunch substitute? Cold press. It is actually a lunch substitute for me. Um, I'm still trying. I, I get to like this, this this little tipping point for me, and I'm trying desperately to get to like this like this weight number, and it's pretty pathetic. I feel like, you know, my wife sometimes, but I'm trying to get this weight number that I've been trying to get for, I don't know, six years now since we had our first child. I think that when my wife got pregnant, I actually was pregnant with twins. So... <laughs> So, you know, I look at back and I go, gosh, I actually picked up by 20, probably 25 pounds when she got pregnant with our first guy and just never lost it. So um, now I'm down to, I, I'm down like 17 or 18 pounds. I just want to get, I just need seven more pounds and I, I'll get there and then I'll, I'll do something like we'll go out and I'll have a glass of wine and some bread. I'm like, no. And, and I always, actually, I had, a, I had a concept that I stuck by for about, about nine months and I swear to you it worked and I bought the domain name for it just because that's how I work. Right. Uh, it was six before six dot com, and the concept was having six meals and never eating after six p.m., but eating six meals before six p.m. That I think that six p.m. is sort of my um, my vice. Like I'll I'll eat at like seven, 
and maybe it's just mental, but I but I swear I'll wake up the next day and I picked up two extra pounds. What, what, so, why don't you do what I do? I eat twice a day. Mark, Mark, you do, weigh, do the you, you weigh eighty seven pounds wet, and you don't ever have to worry <laughs> about your weight. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm not that lucky. I'm not that blessed to have a very fast metabolism. So, I mean, you guys, have, I mean, those you guys will all see Mark, uh, you know, live at the conference in a couple of weeks, and you'll realize when I say eighty five pounds wet, I mean every every word of that. Whatever. So anyway, this is just you know it's a it's a it's a great juice for me. It's got a lot of um, essential you know minerals and vitamins and vegetables that are important to me, and that's what helps me be efficient and focus. And I you know it's really funny. I, I, the last month you're, or two, you're, you're the last person to be talking about focus. No, I'm telling you lately, and it's really interesting. But looking at my as most of the listeners know, I have a son that's uh, a lot like his daddy. And um, and he has a lot of focus problems, and we tried we, we tried dietary changes, but unfortunately, dietary changes for him he he only eats mac and cheese, so it's kind of hard to like go off that mac and cheese into a vegetable or something else. Oh, he does like grilled cheese too. Yeah. So so it's hard to make the like dietary changes because there are uh, people people may not know this, but there are a lot of things that we eat in our diet that really help our brain. Um, and if people just think, ah, it doesn't matter what I eat. It, it really does. And so I just, I, I think it's really interesting because looking, looking at it, looking at it from a perspective of, of, um, of how we are programmed and how we operate. Gosh, I'm sorry. Is that you, Mark, or is that me? That's you. I don't know what's going on here. So I apologize. Is that your, is that your Gmail? It might be my Gmail. I'm, yeah, I'm that's your Gmail. Okay. So um, our apologies there, guys. Um, so I just, I'm noticing a lot of what I eat now has really helped me just from a focus standpoint. I feel like I'm almost focusing better the last few months and tweaking my diet a little bit, adding a couple of vitamins here and there. And so, I, you know, whether it's whether it's a placebo or not a placebo, I seem to right. be doing a lot better focusing. Well, you, you know, it's funny because we were just talking. You've sold a bunch of land recently. And I know you're not spending that much time on, on reserve land. You're spending more time on land hub and this new project which we can't discuss yes which i will make you discuss okay but uh, yeah I'll, I'll go into a little bit of details but yes i have been i have been liquidating property when i say liquidating you know just sell property you know for smaller margins but just to to put me in a position where i can focus because obviously when you've got a few hundred properties uh, you're going to have property taxes that start piling up, and and if you got properties that sell for a couple grand, you know those margins can can quickly uh, can quickly diminish if you sit on your properties for three or four or five years. So right, right. Um, so yes, I'm working on a project which we've discussed in the past. Obviously, I still have my mining project. Um, we've had some, you know, it's that's still progressing. Um, you know, a lot of good things happening there, but still, it's it's funny because I think we've talked about it the last year and a half on the podcast. Um, but that's how these that's how these projects work, right? They're uh, they're not small projects. They take a long time. The, they're very um, volatile with markets. So, like the last three or four weeks, obviously, we've seen a lot of market volatility. Um, you know, not just in the U.S. but globally, due to several things, including Ebola. So, and which is really interesting, watching the markets kind of come down because, you know, there's global fears of a pandemic or epidemic. So, um, so now uh, things have kind of stabilized. Some the markets are kind of going back up again. So, it's, so that's just how some of these projects work, and and uh, and that's the unfortunate part. But that's how the bigger projects, and as I'm sure you know, several people on this podcast can relate to me. That's just how that's the nature of the beast. But my project that I. Um, don't want to talk too much about, but but I can talk a little bit about it. Is is uh, something that I've said before, but um, I've invested in different startup companies in San Diego. I've always had a dream to sort of um, kind of manage an incubator, a business incubator. And people always go, "What? Well, the yeah, heck? yeah." Define define what incubator means, because it's okay, so, different than being an angel, right? Uh, and it's different uh, than being a venture capitalist. Correct, correct. So so basically, the last three or four years, one of the things that I've really enjoyed doing is mentoring startup companies. So a company comes in with an idea. Um, let's say they're, you know, they're, you know, they're in a, you know, a small revenue stage where they're they're generating revenue. They just need help with ideas, um, some advisors, some mentors to scale their business and grow. And so they'll go through a program. Uh, let's call it an eight to twelve week program. And they have a team of people that go in and help them with their, you know, operational model, their, their you know, the finances, you know, finance model, marketing, um, and help grow their brand, and then help them eventually. Get uh, you know additional investment capital to help uh, help them grow their business and scale. Now, so, from a business standpoint and an incubation standpoint, 
what is the most important aspect that you'll look at? Like when you when you when you're evaluating that that company or that mentee, what are you looking for that says, okay, this person I'm going to put my time into. This person not so much. Is it going to be? Is it the entrepreneur? Or is, is that more heavily towards that person? Is it more heavily towards the idea? Do you? I mean, how do you gauge? So it's it's funny because I think some people may have uh, conflicting opinions, but I think most would side with me. Uh, the entrepreneur is the key to the equation here. I mean, execution is ninety nine percent of the equation. But it's interesting because I have I have people. Um, in fact, I had a, a gentleman yesterday, the day before, who has been in contact with me a couple of times, and and he's come back to me because he knows that I could I could really help him. But I'm not in a position. He you know he, some guys that just have sort of a and I don't know if it's arrogance or or what it is, but there's a lot of there's a lot of entrepreneurs that think that they have something very special and they'll hold on to it for five or six years and do nothing with it, and then eventually it goes away. Um, right. So there's a gentleman that that approached me yesterday or the day before that we've talked a few times, and he's just a guy who's not coachable. Right, killer, but killer idea. What, what and, do you mean he's not coachable? Most most entrepreneurs are very stubborn. What, so what yeah, makes but, this person not coachable? Coachable meaning like he won't listen to your ideas. He's always right. Oh, okay. And, uh, and I and I spent time with him on his business model uh, about six months ago, just briefly giving him some some you know really basic ideas. You know, when I think when you've kind of helped these different you know various startups, you look at certain ideas and you can you can assess in twenty minutes what the best strategy for them is. Okay. Um, and especially when it's a market, the, the, the guy that, that brought me the idea was looking to infiltrate a market that he had never been in before, and I knew that and I knew the space very well. And so I said, "Hey, it's not an easy in, and you're you're a better license play than you are trying to brand a product." And so, anyways, he did. He you know he didn't listen to me six months ago. And then he came back, and goes, "No, I actually want to let you know I really agreed with what you said." Um, it took him six months to figure it out, but then he wanted me to. You know, help him do a bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, on performance basis. Listen, that's not how I operate. And I just let him know, hey, if you really want me to help you, this is what you need to do. Um, and he just, he wasn't. You know, his response was something that was to me. I, I can look at it as a waste of my time. Right. So, so it, that is, you know, and that's that's the hard part. You know, that's the process, and that's why we vet these companies when they come in the program. Um, we will be, you know, we'll, we'll probably have. 30 to 30 to 50 applicants every I mean maybe maybe more maybe a lot more um, every you know six to 12 weeks and then we'll be running like an eight to 12 week program now are you they, putting your own money into these companies correct or are you or are you just putting time in correct uh, time and money time so, and money so you, just, you've and got it, to make a hundred bets correct and one of them is gonna pan out and no, you're gonna make a hundred X on your money I, I I'm gonna we're gonna be very careful with what we what we what we work with um, I don't think we're going to make a hundred bets and have one successful story. I think we're going to have. I, I think we have a team of very successful investors behind us for the for the bigger rounds, um, and we're going to have those guys in on, um, you know, what, what they call intakes or pitches, um, so that we can kind of get an idea of who we're dealing with right away and see if there's any synergy within the investors. That because when we're when we're investing, we're not expecting the entrepreneur to do all the work. We're expecting the advisors to take a, a key role in helping that company succeed. Meaning, hey, I've got connections to Nike, or I've got connections to Google, or I've got connections to Amazon. I'm going to help you build this brand, and I'm going to go make some phone calls to Amazon and see what I can do for you. And that's sort of the role that incubators play today, right? You go to, a, you hear a company called or a group called Y Combinator. Y Combinator is huge. That's Paul Graham in New York, right? Correct. Uh, they're out of Palo Alto, I thought. Are they Palo? Well, I think Paul Graham started in New York. He may yeah. he owned the New York space for a while. Then I think he made made his way out west. Got it. And I'm not, I'm not sure exactly where it started. I just know it's a very, very successful program. Had some very interesting people come to the program. Another, another successful group uh, in the same area was uh, Plug and Play. Plug and Play's got a really cool story. I think his name is Saeed. Saeed started. I think he had a carpet carpet store downstairs across from, I want to say Stanford. Okay. And he had space upstairs. And I think I don't know the companies that came through initially. I think one was PayPal, and he gave them free space. And okay. uh, wow. and so basically, you know, free space in exchange for equity. Sure. And so basically, you know, we all know where PayPal is today. And uh, so you can imagine how his investments are looking. Um, if he was, you know, an early investor getting eight, you know, six, eight, ten percent of a company like PayPal, um, he's probably in a really good spot. So he's got a hundred and sixty thousand square foot plug and play center up in uh, up in the Bay Area. He's, you know, they've they've got a couple of them scattered around, but just really cool stories like that where. 
collaboration, a good, great team of mentors and CEOs kind of helping companies succeed. So, and that's kind of where my brain is. I mean, obviously you guys all know Mark and I are a little different. Uh, you know, Mark is, uh, Hundred percent focus on on this land stuff. Well, well, you know, I'm I'm like the you know I'm like a accelerator for land investors, right? Correct. You, Correct. Because you come in here and you get as much information as you want. You get the investors toolkit. You get a broad based education, and then if you want mentorship, we have it, and we'll take yeah. you through the program and we'll accelerate your progress. And we don't take everybody, right? Yeah. So right. And, it's the same, and, and, it's the same thing. Except it's a very narrow niche that we're experts in. I, yeah. I agree. Like I don't believe in in uh, in diluting focus. So I you know, I stay within my focused area of expertise. I try not to go beyond that scope where you say, Okay, I'm an expert in land, but I'm also really interested in startups and I'm becoming an expert in startups and I'm an expert in marketing, so you know, these two things kinda of come together and I'm interested in mining. So you're more diversified than I am. Not that yeah. there's anything wrong with it. I, I just, for me, it's harder. Yeah. No, I mean, you're right. I mean, you know, the, the battle goes both ways, right? Mark, Mark putting this together has taken him a few years of really putting a great program in place. It's cost him a lot of money. Uh, and of course, a ton of his time, put a lot of stress on his family and his marriage, because that's just what happens when you're trying to bootstrap and, and start something like uh, Mark, uh, you know, that, that Mark's created. So for me, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of stress on, on in my life and my marriage and my kids because it's the same thing, right? But I'm not working on one project. I'm working on multiple and I have the ability and, the, and it's, you know, people always say, well, gosh, you focused on one. You'd probably be really successful at one. And I did that. I did that for land for 12 or 15 years. And so and when the market changed, I decided, hey, you know what? I really like to diversify myself because I feel like I have, a, I, I have more of, a, I think, a marketing brain than just a real estate brain. Um, and if you have a marketing brand, you can probably do just about anything, right? I, right. I, you know, yeah, I, exactly. I came up with a with a really cool app this weekend. Um, I've told actually it was like two weeks ago, and I just kind of kept it in my brain, and I kind of passed it around to a few friends. And every single person that I spoke to about this app was like, "You have to create it, um, and it has to do with marriage." And nice. um, and I'm not going to get into too much detail, but it's really, really neat and cool. And it may not be a, a huge money maker, but it's one of those things where it's kind of a feel good. Like if I can create it and help marriages, oh, that'd be right. perfect. So, well, you know, my wife loves me today. I just took her out to like a real expensive lunch, so we're it's all good now. Did you take her to BF Chang's? Where'd you go? Uh, no, it's a place called North, which is like a you know, fancy Italian place out here. Wow, Mark, yeah. check you out. Well, look, you know, I mean. She's she's working hard with the three kids. She needs to get uh, some love, some appreciation. I, and, I you know, and she's she's busier than me probably. Yeah, just with the kids' schedules. So it's nice to to be able to do that. And it's you know, and I'm lucky I'm able to take you know an hour and a half for lunch and, yep. and do that. So that is, that, that is nice. You know, I I, I took so I, I think I told you, Mark, I have a little scooter now that I ride around. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. And so I get I get a little grief here, and I actually love it because I, it's weird because I feel like time slows down. Right. Um, I I live I live by the beach. I've got a car that eats gas, and then I've got a scooter now that I've been driving for a few months. And and uh, I'll go take my newspaper and my computer, and I'll go sit down and have some coffee at my local coffee shop, which is a few miles away. But um, but I I get to drive on the beach, and I, you know uh, it's just. I swear it feels like time stops as you're on this on this little scooter, and I just love it. You know, I'm just focused on the road. And have you, have you yeah. seen the uh, the hoverboard Kickstarter? There's no, a, there's it? a hoverboard for ten thousand dollars. Oh, I saw that. I yeah. did see that. I, I love that's, that idea. That's cool. That would be really cool. I don't know how that works, but uh, looks looks pretty interesting. Yeah, you have to have certain materials, like like this metal material underneath. Yeah, and then it it hovers over it. That's what? oh you know I, I yeah I remember seeing that that's interesting um so Mark tell me what what are you working on are you are you getting prepared for the uh, conference what's going on yeah I'm ready for the boot camp are you are you uh, boot camp ready I'm I'm, boot I'm, camp I'm still ready. working on my slides for some of the new programs um, putting the finishing touches on that uh, getting the audio visual put together but yeah I mean I think it's going to be great it's I know it's going to be great so awesome. what what are we focusing on we talked about this last podcast but. We're definitely doing Facebook marketing. Yep. Uh, there's definitely a lot of networking. You know, the, I think I think one of the key focuses too. We talked about it. I just think the the funnel is really important for everybody to understand, and 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 not just it, again. It, it, we talk about things that don't just apply to real estate, but that right. apply. Yeah, for, yeah, for 
for any kind of business, really. So, so we, we, I really want to maybe get into maybe talking about lead pages or something that people understand. How do we, how do we get opt-ins? How do we treat those opt-ins? And and you know, what do we offer them? What do we give them to entice them to potentially become a buyer? Right. And so, I think that's something that we should definitely go over. Um, you know, whether it's you or me, you know, I'm, I think lead pages is a very interesting platform. And it's really it's really helpful in this in this market. I, I love lead pages. I'm in there every day. Um, let me ask you this: What do you think about conducting a webinar for a piece of land? Is it worth doing? When you, you say that, what do like, you mean a webinar? Like, like let's piece? say you could have 50, 60 people opt in to listen to your webinar, and you walk them through your story. You know, frontier equity properties. This is our mission. This is why we exist right here's our story and now this is the land that we have for sale today only or tonight only for these people on the webinar right and then would, we have a checkout I would, page i would think you're totally lying mark no i'm serious do you, i mean do you but do you like that idea and then you have slides if it was you i wouldn't listen to it but if i was me i'd totally listen to it you totally you listen to yourself talk Basically, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, no, but, no, I think. But it's in general, a, though, do you like that? Do you like that idea for marketing? Do you think in our in real estate space, it's not a great. Platform? I don't. I don't. To be honest with you, I don't know. I mean, it's one of those things where you, you got to try before you buy, right? Like, I don't know if it's. I don't know if it's a successful idea or not until you actually do it. Um, right. You know, you probably have to tweak some some aspects of that. But I think sure. I mean, you know, did, are they going to learn enough in that in that sixty? How long is the podcast? Well, I mean, the webinar, it could be whatever you want. It could be 30 or, minutes, it could be an webinar. hour. I mean, typical webinar. webinar is about an hour. Okay, so say it's an hour long. I mean, you know, the question comes comes down to like, you know, what are they going to learn enough to want to buy that piece of land after they're done in 60 minutes? I don't. I don't know. I, I mean, may, but maybe if they don't buy, maybe you've created enough value in their minds that this is a company that when I am ready to buy a piece of land, this is who I'm going to go to first. Yeah. I mean, and, I, and, build, and build rapport. Yeah. Here's one thing I would say, and it's interesting too, because we talk about like, you know, this, this Ebola scare that, that's going on uh, globally, is that um, is that you know land, land is is really valuable in times of like uh, fear, right? And because people want to be able to you know get away, get off you know get off the grid, and uh, and I and a couple of my friends, a couple of my friends that are really good marketing guys, are like, man, I should I should buy an Ebola website and do something. I'm like, man, you guys are just such capitalists. You guys need to stop. Um, but no, in, in reality, fear though, mongering. But, yeah, I mean, but the fear mongering, I mean, there's, there's a lot of truth in fear mongering at some level because I mean, th there are fear mongers that do it to make money. And then there are fear mongers that do it just because they're paranoid about what could be, what could be happening. Right. And, uh, so, but I, I always, I always say that there are situations like that where I wouldn't say taking advantage of the situation, but it's a great place to find potential buyers that do just want to spend, you know, whether it's one grand or five grand or ten grand on something that they believe is, is a place where they can just get off. The yeah, grid. But aren't, aren't we marketing right now to preppers? I mean, that's a huge market for our, our land. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, on Facebook, and that's something that we're going to walk through on, in the conference. How you exactly do this when you create your Facebook ads? Yeah. How to narrow down your target market or your demographic so that you're marketing to the right audience and your messages congruent to that audience right correct and, and, and yeah exactly one of the other things that that uh, that I should um, that I should just say you know touch on is that is that when you're set when you're building that funnel like it's interesting because Mark and I do various different um, marketing things Mark Mark um, will market himself and Mark will also market his properties so your message is going to be completely different when you're marketing yourself and you're marketing your properties. Right. And so that's that's one of the things that we'll discuss with you know as we go through lead pages is that it's not just about you know throwing something up there and it's going to convert because you know if you somebody opts in for you know something you know something about land all of a sudden you send them something about you um, there's a problem. So you know right. it's, it's just kind of getting that funnel laid down and you know there, I have a little my tip of the week is something that's going to be pretty cool to kind of help understand that a bit better. All right, fantastic. Are we at that point? Are you ready for the tip of the week? Uh, I don't. I think we're probably pretty close, aren't we, Mark? We're pretty close. That's um, pathetic. All, all we talked about today was silly things that I do at <laughs> the conference, and uh, oh, and, and my suja, my suja essentials. Your suja essentials. Let, let's give somebody something actionable to take away from the podcast. 
So they can say, you know what? It was worth listening to the podcast just for this one tip. I so, have a question. Before you say that, yeah. what, can we give away a ticket or two to this conference? I mean, maybe we do one this week and one the following week. I mean, I would love to just, you know. I, I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to give away tickets. Really? I want, I want people to go through some pain. No, I, I agree, but like I'd love like one listener to just do something really, really cool to excite you or me and go. You know, I just don't know what we do. Okay, maybe we'll think about it for next week. How about All right. this? All right, I'll tell you what. If you guys leave a comment for us on iTunes, okay, whoever leaves like the best comment on iTunes, we're gonna send two free tickets. Is that Perfect. fair? Perfect. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I like it. Um, okay, so. Uh, and, you know, again, people, give us feedback. I mean, if you're sick of listening to me or Mark, I mean, Mark's replaceable, 100%. Mark's replaceable. <laughs> I'm, I'm not replaceable. There's Because no <laughs> I'm the one. That, I'm just kidding. I'm 100% replaceable. Um, anyway, so, uh, so yes, definitely leave us a, leave us a comment there on, uh, on iTunes. And, uh, you know, we, we like feedback. You know, yeah. let, Mark, let Mark know what's going on. And, uh, you know, we can, we can change things up. If you want to hear more about things that I'm involved with, uh, we can talk about it. If you want to hear th more things about what Mark's involved with, um, you know, just let us know. Yeah, let us know. So November 7th and 8th, we hope to see you. Scottsdale Conference Resort. Go to landconvention.com. And if you don't have your two free tickets from the Investor's Toolkit, go to that site and get your tickets. Um, they're only 97 bucks now. They were selling for 497 So we're really trying to, you know, as we get – Closer to the date, we're trying to fill that room. All right, Dran, I love it putting you on the spot, but you're already prepared, so I, this is going to like be empty. What is your tip of the week? There's an author, and this author is a pretty talented author. And I don't, you know, it's interesting. We talked about books in the past. I don't read many books. I read the occasional book. Um, you know, I do. I do read my Bible. Um, right. Probably more. So this 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 book, which is a really good book, and it's got rave reviews online. Uh, it's it's launched Jeff by Jeff Walker, an internet millionaire's secret formula to sell almost anything, build a business you love, and I just funny cut cut it off and live the life of your dreams. Yeah, do you know do you know how big Jeff Walker is? By the way, I don't. He's worth four hundred million dollars. Is he really four hundred million dollars? He is. Uh, He's big. He's internet entrepreneur extraordinaire. And this is from – he's probably bigger than that now. This is from 2012. And uh, I'm looking at a, a Forbes uh, article on him. And um, he's got these, these really interesting lessons. I'll, I'll read his lessons right now. Um, lesson number one, this is from Jeff Walker. He who dares wins. Lesson number two. Baby Steps and Gladwell's 10,000-hour rule. So we all know it takes 10,000 hours, uh, about 10 hours uh, or 10 years or 40 hours a week to become an expert in anything. Lesson number three, relationships and connections are everything. It's who you know. Uh, lesson number four, focus on your unique abilities. Lesson number five, new world. Give first, then receive. Give first, then receive. Um and obviously, this is how he kind of made his millions. Number six, opportunity discernment. Do you hear that, Duran? Uh huh. Opportunity discernment. Uh, number seven. What do you hold on? Ne stop. Never right stop there. learning. Never what, stop, stop learning. Op what are you laughing at? Opportunity discernment. You got because you, you jump. You jump into every business. I do not jump into every business. I jump, dude. If you if I jump into every business, you not know, every have, business, I, but you know, stop. basically being an incubator is making lots of bets on different businesses. Yes. Because and and, you that's never fun. know which one's going to work out. I mean, there's no... In, there's but no it's only one platform, so it's it's not bad. Okay. So, go ahead. All keep right. going. All right. So, this is the guy. This is the author. He's a big deal. So, what's what's the name of the book? Uh, again, the book the book name is called Launch, Launch, an Internet Millionaire Secret Formula to Sell Almost Anything Online, Build a Business You Love, and Live the Life of Your Dreams. Sounds right. a lot like Mark. It, it, yeah, exactly. I love it. All right. So this is on Amazon. We'll link to this. And my tip of the week is not as um, great as Duran's, which is typical for this podcast. But that's okay. It's not It's not a competition for who has the best tip of the week. Because for a few weeks there, I was, I was kind of on fire. 
I disagree. Um, Go ahead. All right. So this week, um, you know, blogging is very important, I think, for marketing. And you got to do it every day, right? Or every other day. You got to show up consistently. Like we do the podcast every week. If you're going to blog, you're like, look, I'm going to blog. I'm going to provide something interesting to my readers so they want to keep coming back, right? So right. the, you know, the, the way I define if what you're putting out there is good or not is would you be missed, right? Is someone going to go to your website, click on your blog, it's not there, would they be disappointed? Would you be missed? So this uh, tip of the week is HubSpot.com forward slash blog slash topic slash generator. HubSpot's oh blog gosh. top generator. Don't know what to blog about? Let us think of ideas for you. So you just type in three nines. I'm going to put in land, investing, and entrepreneur. Give me blog topics. And I just click on it. And here it is. A week of blog topics just for you. Number one, 10 quick tips about land. Number two, how to solve the biggest problems with investing. Number three, the ultimate cheat sheet on entrepreneur. Number four, 10 signs you should invest in land. Number five, what will investing be like in 100 years? That's a pretty good tip, buddy. Come on, Mark. That's Gosh. a pretty good tip. Gosh. If there was a if there was a buzzer, you know, like the gong. Are you gonna show, gong I'm, me on that? That I just gave you five great I, blog topics for the I, week. That's a I'm week actually, full that, of blog topics. I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm just. That's actually a pretty cool. That is a pretty cool one. I I think uh, I might have to steal that one. All right. So that, yeah, I, I'll link to that. That's great. All right. So are we good? I think we're good, Mark. You I still, gotta get still, back to preparing for our conference. All right. You're still gonna come to the conference? I've gotta just check with my uh, agent, but yeah, I think I'll be there. All right. Good. Good. All right, great. Well, listen, I want to thank Land Geek Nation for listening to us go on and on about various topics. And uh, if you have some topics you really want us to focus on, shoot us an email. Again, if you want two free tickets to the Land Geek Boot Camp, November 7th and 8th, leave a great comment on iTunes and email support at thelandgeek.com, uh, a link to your topic so we know it was you. And whoever has the best one, we're going to go ahead and send out your two free tickets. If uh, you want to buy some reserve land, go to reserveland.com. Get some. Did we mention uh, landconvention.com? Go to landconvention.com and get your two tickets. We did mention that. Um, okay, if sorry. Duran doesn't have anything you want, go to frontierpropertiesusa.com. And always go to thelandgeek.com. Download for free the passive income blueprint. Get the ebook. How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and of course get this weekly podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. Duran Frazier, thanks again, and we will see everybody next week, and hopefully we're going to see your smiling faces at the two-day boot camp. So let's get registered. All right, buddy. Thanks. Talk to you soon, bud. All right. See everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.